and there are many kinds of values and lifestyles that destroy our testimony. One of that, of course, is the value that gives us immediate and momentary pleasure and then an extended suffering after that. What I'm trying to uh, mention, brothers and sisters, is that of living beyond our means. There are many people that are being robbed of happiness because of living beyond their means. And this is going to be the thief that we will expose tonight. Living beyond our means. What does living beyond one's means really mean? Well, of course, if we're going to look at the dictionary, we will have some meanings like to spend more than what one earns, then to spend or consume beyond available supply of money or goods. And also in another form, and we will also use it in our context, to live beyond one's means is to extend and to exert beyond available supply of energy and talent. In other words, we topple over because we are no longer founded on a strong ground. Mas marami tayong ginagasas kaya sa dumarating, mas marami tayong ginagamit na lakas kaya sa available. And all of these kind of things can rob us of happiness. What are the very common examples of living beyond one's means? And of course, I do not mean to extend our intellect tonight because really these things are known to us. But I would like to offer that we look at them again. Examples of living beyond one's means is to borrow to sustain a certain lifestyle or habit. There are many of us that have to borrow just to sustain a certain uh, lifestyle or habit. Whatever it is, come, let your imagination work and let's conjure up images when we have to borrow just to sustain a certain lifestyle or a certain habit. Another example of living beyond one's means is to depend on another person's resources to sustain one's consumption or lifestyle. Ang hilig-hilig sa mga imported shoes, hindi naman pinagpapawisan, hinihingi lang kung kani-kanino. Ang hilig-hilig sa mga mamahaling damit, pero iba ang nagbabayad, yung mga kapatid, ang nahihirapang magbayad, yung mga magulang, or this kind of things. Of course, there's a certain level in our lives when we are truly and of course expectedly dependent of our parents or families. Pero as dependent, we must live as dependent. Ibig sabihin, ang lifestyle dapat nakabagay. Dependent ka lang eh, ang social social mo pa. Dependent ka pa lang naman eh, ayaw mo na, na magbabas, gusto mo lagi nakataxi. Dependent ka pa lamang naman, gusto mo na agad all the finest signature clothes, dapat isusot mo lang yan if you could already afford it. But then, while we are dependent, we, of course we become, and of course we have to be, what, considerate to our supporters. And so that's example of living beyond one's means. nag enjoy sa buhay, iba ang nagbabayad. And another way to uh, live beyond one's means is to habitually buy things way beyond one's finances. Paminsan-minsan siguro meron ka isang gustong-gustong item na hindi bagay sa ating income, hindi bagay sa ating lifestyle, hindi bagay sa ating pamilya, pero mahalagang mahalaga sa'yo yung gustong-gusto mo, that's tolerable. But to make it a habit to continuously buy items that are way beyond our social and economic bracket is to live beyond our means. Nakulang nakulang na halimbawa ang pera pero gusto pang member ng Makati Golf and Country Club. Wala na tuloy kinakain ng pamilya araw-araw. Na-afford na pero lahat ng pera doon na napunta. Kaya lahat na ng ibang needs na pabayaan na. And of course, relative yan ang next example that I would like to give. And that is excessive spending on one item or activity at the expense of other basic needs. So pwede mo sabihin, bakit na-afford naman namin? Hindi naman kami ng utang. Nakabili naman kami talaga ng jacuzzi. Pero wala ng ulam tatlong buwan dahil napunta na doon. That too will be living beyond one's means kasi hindi na bagay sa rhythm ng buhay. Hindi bagay sa takbo ng buhay. And that means stealing from Peter just to give to John. And that will be living beyond one's means. What are some biblical insights on living within or beyond one's means? Meron bang sinasabi ang Bible tungkol dito? Well, there is a lot of admonitions on this. Some of them are indirect, katulad ng Leviticus 5.7. Concerning offerings. Sa Bible, sa Old Testament, marami mga requirement. Pag itong kasalanan mo, itong i-offer mo. Pag itong kasalanan mo, yun naman ang i-offer mo. Pag ganito ang kasalanan mo, baka dapat ang offer mo. Pag ganito ang kasalanan mo, goat dapat. But when the Bible says in Leviticus 5.7, if he cannot afford a lamb, he is to bring two doves or two young pigeons to the Lord as a penalty for his sin. In other words, the prescribed offering is a lamb. Pero sabi, kung hindi kaya, tama na yung dalawang pigeons. Dalawang uh, kalapati ay pwede na. Sabi, 
yun na lamang. In other words, even the Lord respects the economic limitations of a person. Hindi ka inoobliga. And then, kung hindi mo pa rin kaya yun, sabi sa Leviticus 5.11, if, however, he cannot afford two doves or two young pigeons, he is to bring an offering for his sin, a tenth of an epa of a fine flour, para sin offering. Halos kalahating gatang na lang na harina pwede na rin. In other words, when we look at this, and from this we derive the principle of living within our means, because even if our offering to the Lord should be in accordance with what we can afford, how much more with our consumption? So to offer, to give, and to spend, one has to do it within what we, he can afford. It is dishonorable to the person, and it is dishonoring to God to live beyond one's means. Why do some people live beyond their means? Bakit? Kung sa atin meron tayong mga guilt dito, isa-isahin natin kung bakit. Kadalasan, number one is to boast or to impress. Ganun lamang. May mga bisita tayo, hindi pa natin pakanin ng pandesal o pandekoko, dapat pa French bread. Akala mo, sanay naman tayo doon sa French bread na yun, yung pala naman ay hindi. Yung mga ganun, to boast or to impress, kaya malalaman mo rin dito sa pag-treat sa'yo ng isang pamilya kung gaano ka palagay ang kanilang loob sa'yo. Kung anong kinakain nila pang araw-araw, yun ang naiyahain sa atin. Ganon sila kapalagay sa atin. Ngayon, don't get us wrong. Kung minsan naghahanda tayo as an expression sa ating high esteem for the guest. Pero hindi tayo dapat naghahanda to impress. However, most of the time, ang hospitality is what? Perverted. And the beautiful concept of hospitality is used to impress. Katulad ng mga bahay. Bakit ba dinedekorasyonan ng mga bahay? Bakit ba pinapaganda? Bilang isang pagpapatotoo na pinahahalagahan natin yung mga darating na bisita. It's an expression of our high esteem. Pero marami na nagdedekorasyon, nagaayos, hindi para magpahalaga sa bisita, kundi para magpa-impress. That's why you will realize, palaces in Europe are all very, very impressive. Why? The main purpose is to belittle the foreign ambassadors that call on the monarch. Umaakit ka palang ng hagdan, ipinagsisigawan na ng hagdan, ng chandelier, ng carpet na karapat-dapat ka ba dito? Ganyan. Don't you feel this way kung pumapasok ka sa Manila Hotel? Para ba ipinagsisigawan ng labi sa iyo, Hoy, dapat ka ba dito o hindi? And so what do we do? We rise up to the occasion and get dressed to the teeth. Para lamang maging bagay tayo sa ganong mga lugar. In other words, it's not bad na mag-improve tayo ng situation, maging hospitable, but it must not be done to impress. Because the Lord is not glorified. However, kung kahuli-huli na natin kakainan, ipinakain natin dahil mahal na mahal natin yung dumating, bilang pagpapakita ng ating mataas na pagtingin sa kanila, then it is considered legitimate hospitality. So we boast or impress people, that's why we live beyond our means. And of course, the father of boasting is pride. Kaya all at once, hindi na yan honorable to the Lord. And then, why do some people live beyond their means? To enjoy what they do not deserve or to enjoy what they have not earned. And again, that is a form of robbery. When you enjoy what is not rightfully yours, what is not yours by right, or yours by way of your labor, as a means of wage, then that is very, very unacceptable. Let us not enjoy what we do not deserve. So there are many people that don't work, pero gusto nila, eh, masarap pa rin ang kinakain nila, masarap pa rin ang buhay nila. Iba naman yung naghahalap ng trabaho pero hindi man makakita. Iba naman yung talagang parang linta na sumisipsip ng dugo ng kamag-anak. Dugo ng kapati, dugo ng nanay, dugo ng asawa. May mga ganun. And then why else do some people live beyond their means? That is to deceive. To deceive people. To stand taller than what they really are. To create an impression. And so saan yun nakabase? On falsehood. And Satan is the father of lies. As we can see, what seems to be a very harmless concept of living beyond one's means is really offered by Satan. And then, why else do some people spend beyond their means? Dito marami siguro sa atin guilty in anticipation of expected resources. Bakit ang dami-dami mo namang ginagastos, Mrs. Saudi? Eh kasi next month naman may darating na dollar. Hindi pa dumarating na gastos na. At kadalasan, marami sa ating mga kababayan, marami sa mga magsasaka, Nagiging guilty rin ito. Nakatanim pa ang palay, nakatalaga na, ibabayad na kung kanikanino yung aanihin noon. In other words, nagbibilang na tayo ng sisiw, hindi pa napipitayang itlong. Kaya kadalasan, pagka hindi nangyari yung ina-expect natin, nagkaka-gulo-gulo ang buhay, nagkakabaon-baon sa utang. 
Bakit hindi mo na hintayin na dumating yung resources bago gastusin? Marami sa atin, ine-expect pa lang yung sweldo, pero nagastos na. Lalong-lalo yung mga mahilig sa mga hulugan. Yung mga give-give, ganyan. Pero of course, we understand kung bak ang motivation behind the give-give dahil marami talaga sa ating mga kababayan ay kapwa natin mahirap. Hindi maka-afford ng bilihan, isang ganon. Pero marami naman hindi kahirapan ang source, ang source niyan o ang cause. Gusto lang nila agad ma-enjoy, agad-agad, yung hindi pa maa-afford. In other words, if we have to buy basic things and basic necessities which we cannot afford sa isang bigayan, then siguro maiintindihan at acceptable yung hulugan. Pero yung pwede mong hintayin, halimbawa, isang bilaong make-up, lahat na ng kulay nandun na, kung ano-ano na, pwede naman makapaghintay ang mukha na yan, di ba? Kung kailan darating yung make-up. Pero bakit na uuna agad? Dahil gusto na agad i-enjoy ang hindi pa na-earn. Kaya nagkakalubog-lubog sa utang. And this is a vicious cycle dahil yung mga hulugan, malaki ang tubo. Sa kalakihan ng tubo dyan siguro, sa tatlong bagay na hinulugan mo, actually kung cash, makakabili ka na ng lima of the same thing. So, ang poverty natin, paikot-ikot, pabalik-balik, because wala pa yung pera ginagasos na. Ganyan din ang mga magsasake. Magpapakasal ngayon, may handaan, may birthday, o oh, sa anihan, pautangin mo muna kami ng dalawang kaban, ang balik sa anihan, patlong kaban. Kaya ganoon ang nangyayari. Our people are, you know, going deeper and deeper into poverty because we enjoy what is not yet in our hands and we pay a lot of interest in the process. Even that is not godly because even the payment of interest is regulated by scripture. Kaya pag lumalampas tayo doon ay nagiging ungodly ang ating activity. And so in anticipation of expected resources, kaya may mga nagkakautang-utang. And then, there are people that spend way beyond their means because of their illusions of grandeur. Hindi nila matanggap ang katotohanan na hindi nila ma-afford ang isang bagay. Kaya gumagawa sila ng artificial means to be able to afford it. At kadalasan na nga yung mangutang. Lalo yung mga taong sanay sa dating mayroon, tapos nawala. Hindi nila yung ma-accept and so therefore they do not live within their means. And so what happens? They resort to so many ungodly activities. Just to be able to live in their illusion and to artificially maintain a lifestyle which they can no longer afford. And yet, there are some people that live beyond their means dahil, eh ano, iba naman ang nagbabayad. Tulad ng sinabi natin kanina, other people on their right, their excesses. Kaya, hindi bali na, iba naman ang nagbabayad yan, ate ko naman, kuya ko naman, or that. How does living beyond our means rob us of happiness? Totoo nga ba, are we being robbed of happiness by living beyond our means? Of course, yes, because in the first place, we pay. Even if we live beyond our means, we pay with the actual value and much more later on. Tulad ng sinabi natin, meron ding interest yan. If we do not pay with actual value, we pay with our dignity and self-respect. Marami mga tao, they cannot live within their means. So what do they do? They go to all sorts of compromises, selling dignity, selling honor, selling self-respect. Ilang nakikiusap ka, usap ka, nangungutang-ngutang ka, na halos ikaw ay hindi pansinin, hindi kang itian, sunod ka pa rin, ay isa ng malaking pagbababa ng ating self-respect. Something that God did not intend for us. The Lord wanted us to be humble, but hindi naman para tayo hamakin. Humble lang. Voluntary humility. Hindi dahil nagiging kang humble, dahil wala ka lang choice. And so therefore, we are being robbed of happiness because when we live beyond our means, we pay with actual value and much more, and at the same time, we lose our dignity. Bakit? Kung utang ka ng utang, kahit nakakabayad ka, ang iyo pa rin label, mangungutang. So you're always treated by people on that level, kahit pa nga tayo nakakabayad. And so therefore, nakakabawal siya ng happiness natin dahil nawawala yung ating self-dignity. And of course, another way that we're being robbed of happiness is because when we live beyond our means, we always worry. We worry about paying. Second, we worry about coping. Kung yun na yung image natin, kung paano natin i-maintain yun. Hindi naman sanay ang mga tao nakikita ang nakasabit ka sa bus o kaya taxi ka ng taxi kahit wala ka nang ma-afford, di ba? Hindi naman sanay ang tao na tuwing birthday mo, hindi ka maghahanda dahil nasanay na. So ngayon, kahit wala tayong pera, mangungutang tayo kasi nakasanayan na yan ng mga tao. So we worry about coping. And of course, worrying will rob us of happiness. And then we worry about getting found out if in case we are, what, standing taller than what we really are. Ang isang tao na nabubuhay beyond his means ay hindi siya masaya. Marami siyang ibinabayad, marami siyang inaalala, marami siyang itinatago. 
Pagkat tapos, we become indebted, nagkakautang-utang. And we miss the peace of mind that is only available if we live in the truth. Wala yung peace of mind. And then, we forgo other needs and important things just to be able to afford something which is, of course, very special to us. Marami pa mga kapatid, pag-iisipin natin. Come to think of it, this seems to be a very harmless subject and many of us will probably not put this as one of the top priorities of the thieves that are us of happiness. But come to think of it, every day, every month, every year, hindi ba maraming mga unhappinesses are being robbed if we li- live beyond our means? How can we stop living beyond our means? And how can we stop this from robbing us of happiness? Unang-una, I suggest, brothers and sisters, seriously study your resources and expenditures. At kung ano lang yung available, live within that. Pwede yun. Pwede yun. Set guidelines on priorities and allocations. If you are a family, you can sit down with the family and set guidelines. Sabi natin, oh, somebody is going to college next year, so wala mga magbe-birthday party ngayong year na to. All these kind of things. Kasi in the, uh, economic problem is one of the deepest problems of our country. I doubt if there's anybody here not affected by this. So, hindi na tayo pwedeng mamuhay sa dating lifestyle. Dapat tayo ngayon mag-adjust. Stick to what is affordable. May kasabihan ng mga Tagalog, habang maikli ang kumot, matutong mamaluktot. At talagang ganun. So, we stick to what is affordable. We keep our feet on the ground. Hindi ko manasanay na tayo sa ganun. Eh. I-maintain natin yun kahit mahirap. And then, stop depending on others. Stop depending on others. Accept reality and even enjoy it. The secret of it all is contentment. First Timothy 6, 6 says, But godliness with contentment is great gain. Bakit kaya great gain ang godliness with contentment? Because if we are contented and our contentment is premised on godliness, then hindi tayo makakompromiso. Hindi mangyayari mga lahat ng pinag-uusapan natin. And then one more thing, brothers and sisters, how can we stop living beyond our means from robbing us of happiness? Extend your means. Eh, mahili ka palang gumastos, eh di, kitain mo yan. Be productive. Widen your base so you do not topple. Eh, kung mahili kang kumain ng masarap, eh, kumuha ka ng paraan para ka kumita. Mahilig pala tayong gumastos ng ganito. Kailangan, something's got to give. What we really have to think of is to be productive. Masama yung gusto mo, enjoy ka lang ng enjoy, tapos hindi ka naman nahihirapan, hindi ka nagpapagod, hindi ka nagbabayad. And so, be productive. And yet, as I have mentioned kanina, there's still another form of living beyond one's means, and that is living beyond one's talent or energy. Lahat ng pinag-usapan natin so far, materialistic orientation, na ang limitation ay pera. Pero marami pa tayong limitasyon sa buhay, and one of our limitations is talent. And another limitation is our energy. Marami mga tao, they stand taller than what they really are, pretending to know what they do not know. Pretending to be what they are not. At anong resulta? Pagod na pagod silang magpanggap. They have fear of being found out. And a lot of stress in trying hard to cope. Kung hindi nyo alam, aminin. Because to say, yes, alam ko, kaya kong gawin, pagkatapos napasubo ka, is also to live beyond your means. This time, the means that we're talking about is intellect or the capacity, the talent. So, another form, of course, of that is accepting and assuming work or task beyond one's natural energy level. Marami sa atin nagiging ganyan. We live beyond our means by having too much commitment. Ang dami-daming inoohan, ang dami-daming tinatanggap na trabaho, ang dami-daming tinatanggap na lakad, lahat na lamang ng yumayaya at sasama, lahat na lamang ng mga imbitasyon, inoohan. And so what happens? Hindi na tayo nag enjoy sa buhay. Life is just a series of what? Going there and coming here and running around and jumping all over the place. Too much commitments, too much involvement. And what is the result? You spread yourself too thinly. And a person that spreads himself too thinly will always find life stressful. We exert much energy shuttling from one work to another, from one commitment to another. Therefore, we have an unfocused energy. And therefore, everything we do is substandard. Wala nang may quality kasi lahat na lang nag-aapura, nagmamadali. And when all of this happens in our lives, brothers and sisters, we lose our joy and we lose our fulfillment. If you don't have enough joy now, either you 
have spread yourself too thinly or you have curled up and not spread yourself at all. Either you're too busy or you're not doing anything. In both cases, bring unhappiness. So let's think about this. Something's got to give. Hindi po rin nagko-commit ka sa church choir o nagko-commit ka sa Sunday school tapos lahat pa rin ng party nandoon ka. Hindi pwede na meron kang commitment sa isang ministry tapos lahat pa rin ng lakaran kasali ka pa rin. Something's got to give. Kaya kung ano na lang ang mahalaga sa atin, doon na lang natin inuubos yung energy, yung iba, sige na, di bali na, pass na lang muna. Pero hindi pwedeng pare-pareho yan. Because we will be robbed of happiness. And to be unhappy is to sin. Because God wants us to be happy. This subject matter may not be too profound to many of us. To some of you, parang ano ba yan? Message ba yan? O lecture ba yan? O ano ba ito? But the point is, remember, we've got to identify all roots of unhappiness. Because Satan will always deceive us and Satan will always want us to be unhappy. When you are unhappy, you will not be able to make another person happy. You cannot give what you do not have. And so therefore, we can no longer minister to one another. Let's be happy, brothers and sisters. Let's live beyond our means. Living beyond one's means is living in a lie. And Satan is the father of lies. Be delivered by the truth. Jesus Christ is the truth. And so I just would like to challenge each one, all of us, stop living beyond your means. It will rob you of happiness. The truth liberates. Minsan lang natin i-declare, oh, I cannot afford that. Tapos, free na tayo forever. Kesa lagi tayo nagpe-pretend na pwede natin ma-afford. Then we work too hard just to be able to cope with other people. Let's reflect on the areas of our lives where we live beyond our means. Let's think about these things. And we will pray together. Why don't we be alone with the Lord and see, Lord, in what areas of my life am I living beyond my means? So let's be alone with the Lord and then we will pray together. Our Heavenly Father, please search our hearts. Tell us through the Holy Spirit in what areas of our lives we cheat ourselves and we cheat you by living beyond our means. You made us, O God. You know our limitations. We cannot hide anything from you. And so we seek your face. Teach us where we can be liberated so that we can live within our means. Search our hearts, O Lord. And if there's anyone among us who realizes that there's an, a certain area of his or her life where he or she lives beyond means, we will seek the Lord's empowerment tonight to deliver us, to strengthen us, and then to enable us to live according to reality and the real boundaries. Everybody has limits. But not everybody would acknowledge it. And so before the Lord of hosts, let's acknowledge and then let's seek his guidance. If there's anyone here who has made realizations that he or she has lived beyond his means, I'd like to pray for you right now and let the Holy Spirit, let the Holy Spirit give us the wisdom how to get out of this mistake. Will you stand and we will pray together. Whoever would like to be delivered from living beyond means, maybe it is beyond talent, maybe it is beyond... Uh, capacity, maybe it is beyond our financial resources, whatever it is. Our dear Heavenly Father, we stand before you, recognizing that we have worked against your design and against the natural limits that you in your infinite wisdom has allowed us to have. Father, thank you for the realization. Thank you for pointing out to us the very corners and the very areas of our lives where we live beyond our means. And thank you, Lord, for the liberating power of the Holy Spirit that when we recognize this and when we do not hide this, O oh Lord, we will be a lot happier in our lives. Empower these brothers and sisters who are standing before you tonight to live by the truth and not to hide it. But Father, teach also our friends, our relatives, our loved ones to accept us even with our limitations because you accept us with our limitations. And in the same process, teach us to accept others and teach us also to accept their limitations. 
May you liberate us and may your Holy Spirit continue to give us the wisdom to make the right liberating decisions every day of our lives. In Jesus' mighty name we pray with thanksgiving. Amen.